All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I am very pleased to be joined by a special guest today who I'll uh, introduce in just a moment. Uh, but first, a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever in the world you are joining us from. Uh, it is a pleasure to have you. And we're going to dive in. We have a lot of really big announcements, uh, especially some that were made today. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to introduce quickly my colleague, Chris. Chris, would you like to say a quick hello and a few things about yourself? Sure. Hi, um, Chris Bailey. I'm a product marketing manager um, who you know works a lot with Jen, and I focus a lot of my time on you know the new workspace and app sheet um, integrations and ways that we can improve productivity through those two platforms. Thanks, Chris. And Chris was with uh, AppSheet before acquisition as well. So those of you that have been around for a while, you've probably heard Chris uh, sneak in on a few of these before. So Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Um, for those that I have not met before, those that this is your first office hours, my name is Jennifer. It's lovely to meet you or great to see, hear from you again. Uh, and then we are still in work from home mode. Uh, we're based in the Seattle area. Um, so you may hear uh, my work from home co-host Roxy. She's actually quite vocal today, although she's staring out the balcony window right now. So let's let's hope she's a little more reserved. But if you hear a jingle or a bark in the background, forgive me <laughs> for that. And I know someone requested a live camera feed of Roxy in the past. I'll get you a picture at some point. I don't know that my apartment's in a state to <laughs> see the talk right now. All right, so that aside, let's get into it. Uh, so today we have um, a, a pretty packed agenda, and by that I mean we have some really big items and announcements that were made in the past um, few weeks that we're going to address, and I anticipate a lot of questions. We already have quite a few that have come in. Um, so with that, we'll get started with some resources for those that are new to the platform. So if you are brand new to AppSheet, uh, you've been on it for a week or two, a uh, few things that we'd like to highlight. One, uh, register for an account at community.appsheet.com. It's a great way to find crowdsourced resources, answers to questions, ways to troubleshoot, uh, and inspiration for app building. We're inspired every day by what you all do and create, and so we highly recommend checking out that space. You'll also find a link to our community uh, in the chat box for today. We highly encourage you to post your questions there. It links directly to a thread for today. And what that does, if we're unable to answer a question in this session, or if there's a special expert we need to get eyes on, they're able to do so in a more timely manner than if we try to filter everything through the questions in here. So highly encourage you all to post your questions on that particular thread. Uh, next up, for those of you uh, where English is not your first language, or if you have customers um, that you would like to direct to resources and English is not their first language, we've actually been crowdsourcing a number of uh, languages from across the globe. We have Japanese, Thai, I think I saw Portuguese on there recently, uh, I believe French is on there too. So we highly encourage you to check out these resources. Again, our community of creators inspires every day. This is just another example of how they're all working together to further citizen development and help empower each other. So definitely check out that resource. All right, announcements. Uh, AppSheet automation. So this is a feature that we announced during our next on air, which was the week of, Chris, was it September 9th? I think it was about a month ago. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that feels it feels a lot longer ago than that, but it was about a month ago we announced uh, this special new feature that we'll be rolling out uh, in the coming months. Right now, we are taking applications for early access um, for this particular feature. So do sign up. Um, we are we are interested in a wide variety of use cases, industry types, and needs. So do sign up. Uh, it's a great way to try a product in its early stages. If you've never done it before, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to provide direct feedback into what we're doing and you get to see uh, what happens with your feedback over time. So highly recommend signing up for that particular program. Uh, this is more of a reminder, uh, but G Suite Essentials and AppSheet, this was something that Chris actually worked on quite a bit um, earlier in the summer. We sent out an email a few weeks ago, uh, but just a reminder that for those of you that were taking advantage of this promo code, it does expire tomorrow, 
Um, so reach out to a rep if you have any questions and we, we can help address those for you. All right. Lastly, before we get into the bulk of it, uh, we're going to go over some product updates. Editor Refresh has been rolled out. I feel like I should have balloons and horns and confetti. Um, this is a really big deal. So thank you to all of you that have provided feedback. Um, I think it's 100% rolled out now. If not, it's very, very close to. Um, but this was kind of one of the first steps of seeing what AppSheet looks like within the Google universe. So keep your feedback coming. A um, lot of great critiques have been coming in as well as really constructive, helpful information. It's the only way we're going to improve. Uh, we do kind of have blinders on because we see the product one way, but you all use it in a very different way than we do. So do keep that feedback coming. Uh, the Apogee connector that we've been discussing, I know we did a webinar, I think a month, a little over a month ago with Scott Halland um, that is now in GA, it was in beta before. Again, keep your feedback coming on that particular connector as well. Uh, UI updates for applications are beginning to roll out and these are your end user applications. Um, one example of this is the header height uh, is changing. So keep an eye out for that and we'll add more details into our feature um, release notes section of the community. Uh, we have batched execution of in expressions and index filtering. Um, this was meant to be primarily a performance improvement, but you'll start to see changes in that family of expressions, I believe in the coming weeks as well. Okay, Chris, we are going to dive into really the meat of what you're going to address. Are you ready? Sure. Okay, so. Yeah. AppSheet and Google Workspace. Chris, I'll let you take it away. Yeah, so um, if you haven't seen it yet, you'll see it very soon. The exciting news is that um, what was G Suite or um, Google G Suite uh, is, has now become Google Workspace. So they rebranded it and also, you know, it's, along with that, they're bringing in some new features and things like that and, and really um, redefining what the space looks like and, and what it looks like to be um to be pro productive um when we talk about this new google workspace we're talking about hey let's how can and, and there's a lot of focus right now within the workspace team um to see how can they make working wherever you're working whether it's from home in the field um in the office how can we make that work simpler more flexible and more helpful for everyone so uh, along with that they're, they're really looking to improve that productivity improve, improve collaboration and, and help make work easier you know, obviously with COVID, there's a lot of new challenges that have come up. Um, of course, there's more stringent requirements for people working in offices or in the field or on the floor. And then for people working on home, you're getting less human connections. Um, collaborating can be harder. You're doing a lot more in the cloud. And so Google Workspace is really bringing in a lot of those things and making it easier for people. Um, okay. So um, with that said, um, AppSheet's, um, very excited about this as well because we've been working with this workspace team you know definitely as they're looking at how do we make things how do we make um, you know work more flexible and helpful AppSheet definitely comes in play of hey this is a tool this is a no-code platform that a lot of people and more and more people are using to improve their processes um, streamline tasks digitize you know the work that they're working on um, create custom apps to help them with the specific needs that they have, depending on you know where you're working and what you're working on. So actually, it's really important for Google Workspace. And a part of that is you're gonna see some integrations starting to get rolled out now. And the first one that's coming out right here, um, and it's being rolled out today, and not everyone will have access to it immediately, but over the next couple of weeks, um, you'll all gain access to being able to open AppSheet directly from Google Sheets. If you go to Tools, you can go down to Open an App Sheet. And if you have the data laid out correctly in your sp spreadsheet, it'll open up an App Sheet app, read it, and automatically create an app. Um, this is very similar to what the App Sheet add-on used to do, but now it's actually native within Google Sheets um, and Google Workspace. And so along with that, um, we're able to work with the team to make sure that it works better. And you're gonna be able to see more and more functionality being built into this and other things within Google Sheets, Google Sheets, um, Drive, and Workspace, and App Sheet. Yeah. So that's the add on there. Sorry, Jen, did you want to add something? Yeah, it was going to mention we'll do a quick demo of what Chris was just discussing in terms of accessing App Sheet through um, Google Sheets. 
but this is a really big deal. One of the main questions we've been getting since the acquisition was, how is AppSheet going to integrate with Google? Um, to Chris's point, this is one of the first examples of how we plan to tackle that. Um, and I, I will add on, um, Chris mentioned something really important, structuring your, as long as your data is structured appropriately. We have a number of resources that, especially if you're new to the platform, uh, can help you understand how to best structure your data to be successful with AppSheet, more so than, you know, making edits in the editor or tweaks with expressions, ensuring that your data is structured correctly or um, in a way that is more aligned with how the intelligence side of AppSheet is really, really critical for success. And so we'll link a couple of those resources in the community post for this. Um, yeah, Chris, exactly. go ahead. No, and setting up your data is really important and something that, you know, before, um, you know, there would be kind of this this area where you have to just hope you're setting up your, for, for people new to AppSheet, you're hoping you're setting up your data correctly in Google Sheets and then you create your app and um, if it works, it works. If not, you get an error. Um, with this and with these integrations, we're able to have a little more control over making sure and helping you set your data up correctly earlier on. So just initially here, if you don't have any data in your spreadsheet, this will this will be grayed out. But if you do have data in there, then the open and AppSheet will show up and that'll just get better and better over time. The other piece of this that we're excited to announce is that um, if you're a move, getting moved to the uh, Workspace Enterprise Plus um, plan, then you'll also have access to AppSheet Pro included in that plan. So that's, uh, and right there it says Google Cloud Enterprise. I wanna be specific here, it's the Enterprise Plus plan. There's a couple enterprise plans there. So um, if you're Google uh, in the, Google Workspace Enterprise Plus plan, then you'll also have access, access to AppSheet Pro um, that's included in that plan. Um, and if you have questions about how to activate that and stuff, then you basically can work, reach out to the support and they'll get you access to that. And that would be works, Google Workspace's Enterprise Plus plan. I'll update yeah. that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> I'm, ad I'm adjusting um, to the new name myself. Yeah, no, I know. Yes, we also, you know, just, you know, they they kept this um, you know very hidden of what the name would be and everything. So we're we're updating some names as well. Uh, the other thing I want to just call out is that there's um, we've been working earlier on with the uh, workspace or G Suite team before, along with that essentials cam uh, the essentials promo that Jen mentioned a few slides before, and we've built um, several app templates that use that bring in some of that workspace functionality with AppSheet, so that you can you know open a meet directly from an app and it showcases some of that. So if you're curious to look at some of those app templates, you can go to solution.appsheet.com slash G Suite, and we'll also update it so you can go to solution.appsheet.com slash workspace soon. And um, there's a bunch of cool templates there that you can open up and explore. So I'll also call that out as a highlight. Awesome, and I'll, uh, I'll link that to um, the thread for office hours for today too in, in the Perfect. creator community. Awesome. Um, so Chris, we've got quite a few questions coming in for this. Uh, are you ready to tackle some? Uh, I am ready. I will say one thing that I'm not on the workspace team, so I might not be able to answer all the questions specifically about workspace, but some of the app sheet workspace questions, hopefully I can answer those. And we uh, will, just to kind of emphasize Chris's point, we'll do our best, um, and I think this is kind of a standard for office hours, we do our best to answer the questions um, in real time. If we're unable to, we'll follow up with you usually on the creator community thread um, with an answer to your question. And we'll try to do it as timely as possible. Um, with this announcement, there's a couple of additional um, kind of hoops to jump through to get an answer for you. So we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, okay, Chris, with that, let's try to tackle this first one. Uh, I see the, that, and this kind of emphasizes or um, addresses something you just mentioned. I see that cloud enterprise customers will have access to Pro. What about business? How will the licensing model change going forward? Yeah, so the only change we're looking at is just those Enterprise Plus customers will get access to Pro. Um, and, and that really is just for, for that high tier, they wanna bring in a little bit of that extra app sheet um, functionality as an incentive. There's a lot of really good stuff in the Enterprise Plus bundle. So with business, there's not gonna be any changes there. Um, and with with all the other tiers, in fact, and, and plans, there's there's no changes. You'll have access to app sheet free. Um, and if you're paying for a separate plan, then you'll continue being able to pay for that plan. 
uh, in addition, if you are on the Enterprise Plus plan and you would like to move up to business, that's still, you know, you'll have to pay for that separately. So that's not, you just get access to the pro if you're on the Enterprise Plus plan. Cool. Uh, does Google Cloud's Enterprise Plus plan allow you to connect to a SQL database? This might be a question for the workspace team. Uh, well, if it's if it's through AppSheet, you won't because that's not part of it. They just get whatever is an AppSheet Pro. So if you're curious, like what are the are there different entitlements with AppSheet Pro? It's going to be the same. So if you go to appsheet.com/pricing and look at what's included in AppSheet Pro. Um, essentially, all of that stuff will be included in that Enterprise Plus um, plan. Uh, the only difference is that with the Enterprise Plus plan, essentially, um, everyone in that plan will be able to access AppSheet, create apps, and share apps with people, with other people in that plan. So, you know, if there's 100 people who are Enterprise Plus, um, you, know, you know, seats under the Enterprise Plus plan, then those 100 people will have access to AppSheet Pro and be able to share AppSheet apps with each other within that group of 100 people. Um, and if they want to add on like external users or something like that, they'll still have to pay for them. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, yeah it makes sense to me. Uh, John, if we're not addressing your question correctly, um, feel free to either follow up with us or reach out to your rep uh, at Google and they should be able to help provide a little added clarity there for you as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let's see. Uh, will AppSheet be an app in G Suite core apps? Um, I, I can kind of take a stab at this, Chris, if, if that's okay with sure. you. I don't believe we've met the threshold yet to be considered a core app of, of Google. We're, we're nine months into our Google journey. Um, we have a long way to go. So in essence, we are not a core app yet <laughs> i think that's a hope of ours but um we're, we're still very much an infant um, in google world great uh will you send this recorded session yes paula um we always record these uh they want actually i should amend that they won't be sent out via email but we do post them on the community thread so that thread that you see there um in your question box for today Make sure you follow along there. Uh, we post our videos on our YouTube channel, uh, and then they'll also be posted within this thread for um, rewatching in the future. And I'll make sure uh, to amend um, some of the content from earlier to specifically call out Google Workplace Enterprise Plus for this particular uh, plan change. Um, okay, a question I will come back to. Okay. Um, Bill, I just want to quickly call out, I see your question here. Uh, we'll follow up with you directly um, after this call. You have a call about um, sales contact. We'll follow up with you directly after. So I just want you to know that, that that's not being skipped. Um, I am a teacher and would love to introduce AppSheet to my college students for an eight-week class. Is there a curricul curriculum that you provide to teach the content and is there a charge? So uh, there's not an eight week curriculum currently. We do have access, or you do uh, have access to our Udemy course, which is a, a 90 minute course that you could certainly break out. Um, we do have a few additional resources uh, that, that might be a good way to approach teaching your students. So for example, we ran a pilot um, hackathon with a, a company in the Philippines earlier this year. Um, it was very, very bare bones resources. It was essentially a list of how to create an app um, that had workflow capabilities built into it. And then your students would go through and access each individual resource to kind of teach themselves. And that's really the beauty of a citizen development driven product is that the less guidance you have in the education process, the more likely you are to retain the information and be successful moving forward. So it's really about uh, being a self-starter um, in terms of the resources that we have to offer. And Paula, I'd be happy to post them on the community forum and, and direct you towards those. Also, getting them involved in these office hour sessions to ask questions of the team is really helpful in learning as well. So um, I know that's a half answer to your question, but feel free to post on the community forum. Um, there's a lot of individuals like Crewtech, for example, is a company we work really close, uh, a partner of ours, I should say. And they have a lot of great content that might be more what you're looking for. So 
um, go ahead and post an open-ended question and, and somebody might respond with something that could be helpful for you. Yeah, that's what I would add is that there's a lot of um, there's a lot of people creating content in different courses and stuff. So reach out to the community and, and you'll get some, you know, good materials to leverage. Yeah, um, we actually have another a number of companies that their entire job is AppSheet and to teach people how to use AppSheet. Um, they are separate from Google, they are separate from AppSheet, but they create really great resources. So that might be um, a good avenue for you to go down. Uh, okay, so a question from Steve. Uh, login that is not Google or OAuth is what I'm looking for. Can that be done? Um, Chris, do you actually wanna answer this question? Um, can you re repeat it? Yeah, so a login that is not a Google login. Can it be done? Through Sheets? So, I mean, you can always log in through through non-Google sources to access AppSheet, but you wouldn't... Um, so, uh, so uh, like, in, into into um, Workspace or into AppSheet? Because AppSheet, yes, you can log in through, through a lot of other... Um, data sources and, and, and um, emails, whether that's from Office or, you know, a Dropbox source or something else. Is that the question? I think, Steve, if, if we're not um, framing your question correctly, let us know. But I think that's what he was getting at here um, is, you know, can you use something other than Google to access AppSheet? And the answer is yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're, we're building these things out with, with, with Sheets to help make um, it's even easier using the two different platforms, but um, AppSheet's going to continue to, you know, support um, and, and continuously improve these other data sources and other logins, whether that's through Office or, or some other source so that you can connect your data to, you know, Dropbox, Box, um, Smartsheets, Office, all of that. Yes, that is correct. And, and that's part of our mission to help democratize technology and make it more accessible. If we only allowed Google um, access, we'd be limiting who could access this technology pretty dramatically. So uh, we want to keep it as open and available as long as as long as we can. Um, and and just, just to fill in, if you are wondering about like sheets and um, the new workspace, there is a the a plan called Workspace Essentials, where essentially you can, um, where you can log in <laughs> through um, non-Google emails and access um, like Google Sheets and slides and everything like that. So you can also log in to um, and, and use Google Workspace without having a Google email. So it's kind of a yes to both, um, whether it's AppSheet or, or Google Sheets. And, Awesome, and thank you for that pun, Chris. Uh, Praveen normally adds the pun, um, so I appreciate <laughs> you getting that in. It's not, an it, it's not an office hours unless there's a pun involved, so thank you for that. Uh, okay, so Paula, um, this is gonna sound kind of odd, but your question on on-prem uh, data sources, if you can actually post that on the community thread, I'm gonna tag someone that can answer that question for you directly. Um, because we've, we've received that question a few times in the past few days. So if you want to post it there, we'll make sure it's addressed and that way anybody else with that question um, can address it. Okay. I'm trying to work on it. I'm just processing a question here. Do you have any plans to make AppSheet customizable to trigger API? Not certain I quite understand that question. Um, I think it's Het, if I'm saying your name correctly. If you can rephrase your question on trigger APIs, um, maybe we can address that a little better for you. Uh, any updates for those of us transitioning from AppMaker to AppSheet specifically around licensing? Um, so French Williams, I think we've spoken previously, but um, for those that are, are former AppMaker customers, uh, there is a promo plan that has been available to you. I think that started in February. So you have access to the pro plan. Um, it's the same pro plan, I believe, Chris, that or a similar pro plan that we're offering with the Google Workspace Enterprise Plus. Yeah, it's similar, um, but you also get to have a SQL database connector. So that's the only difference. Exactly. You have, you have, yeah, you have access to your instance 
Um, that's something that we typically charged and upcharge for, but we wanted to include it so that there was as little disruption as possible during this time. Um, so that, that should be an update on the licensing side. Now, if you need enterprise functionality and features like governance, that's something you'll need to talk to our sales team for, but you do have access to a special type of pro license specifically for app maker users. Just reach out to our team um, and we'll be able to help you with that. All right. Okay, Steve, you're asking for the Udemy course. Um, in the creator community, um, there's actually a tab at the top, I'm just gonna mention to everyone, um, called Education. If you click on that tab, the very first one will say AppSheet Academy, and that will take you to the free Udemy course. So just, just a heads up for everyone on that, and I can do a quick um, demo on that if you need it in a moment. All right, into AppSheet. Okay. Okay, in general, how is AppSheet different or better than Power BI? We are looking at both and trying to see which will most meet our needs. And by Power BI, I'm guessing we're saying like Power Apps and, and um, Power Automate. Um, Power BI is their um, like analytics dashboard. Um, more similar to, I guess, Looker, um, while Power Apps and Power Automate are um, Microsoft's low-code options. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of big differences between AppSheet and Power, the Power platform. A couple that I think I would call out is one, AppSheet is a true no-code platform, which means that with AppSheet, you don't actually have to code. You're going to be using things using, you're going to build out your apps using our UI as well as expressions. Um, and AppSheet is a, takes a data-driven approach to creating these applications, meaning that you're going to connect your data, and then AppSheet's intuitively going to read that data and create certain views that you can then, you know, customize or create new views for. Um, and it, it makes it, it creates that based, or, or it creates that from the data instead of coming in and looking at, uh, like, like forcing you to define every single little button and um, spacing and UI within it where that's more of a, like a drag and drop approach where you start with building out a, a blank canvas and you try to connect that blank canvas to your data um, and specify each button with AppSheet, it's a lot faster because um, it takes that data-driven approach, we'll create the different UIs and then you just have to customize it. You can spend more time looking at what do you want your app to do instead of you know, defining every single little piece of it. So it works a lot better taking that data-driven approach and helps you create apps faster and again, the, the no code piece of it where you don't have to code with AppSheet makes it easier to pick up and learn. Um, while with the Power Platform, when you start getting to more advanced things, you're gonna have to start using their custom code and um, it, it just takes a lot longer to build out. Um, Jennifer, do you wanna add anything onto that? Uh, okay, I think you, you hit all of the big points. The, the one thing I really wanna emphasize um, for you, Paula, though, and Chris mentioned it a few times, is that difference between no code and low code. No code is really that true citizen developer platform. You don't have to be technical um, to pick up a no code technology. That being said, there will be some advanced pieces like advanced expressions and things like that that will feel a little bit like coding, but they're not coding. And Chris mentioned, you know, low code, you do eventually get to a place where you do have to start executing on, you know, custom coding. Um, you do have to have some knowledge of that type of technology or certain languages. So it's, it's, it's a really important distinction between the two. There's a lot of other nuances, but I think understanding those two differences is, is the most important. So yeah, thanks Chris for that, that, uh, that nice bullet point step-by-step -step, um, or the nice bullet point variance between the two. Mm -hmm. um, okay. All right. Um, John, any timeline available for chart updates, specifically the labeling and key for scatter plot view? Um, John, I think you are involved in the chart testing group. Um, Thierry can provide some information on timeline. In our office hours a few weeks ago, he mentioned that it was a Q4 goal. So by the end of this year, our goal is to have made some improvements to um, charting capabilities. Uh, so do keep a, a lookout um, in the next few months, but if you have a specific question, um, like labeling, I think you call out here, go ahead and follow up with Thierry in that group, um, and he can give you some additional information. Uh, all right, Alex, you have a question on 
examples of usage of the coming no-code process automation. Um, are you looking for use cases? Is, is that what you're getting into? I'm, I'm making that assumption, but if you can clarify that question a little bit, we'll see if we can get you an answer. Um, okay, and then Nicholas has a question on pricing again, Chris. Um, he's asking for any G Suite, now Google Workplace customer, um, this is the new pricing and he links to the page. Uh, AppSheet appears available on enterprise plan, but not any of the business. Um, yeah. So Nick, go ahead, Chris. No, that, that, that's correct. So AppSheet's on enterprise plus, um, but it's not on the other plans. Um, I mean, you can always access AppSheet, AppSheet free through those other plans, but just not AppSheet Pro. AppSheet Pro is only in enterprise plus. Great. Um, okay. So Steve is asking if there's a paid solution, where can we pay to get our solution built by a provider? Um, Steve, I think I understand your question. I think you're asking to work with a partner to help build your applications. Um, if you just wanna post on this thread, again, similar to the ask in terms of resources to learn for a curriculum, I guarantee you one of our partners will reach out to you um, to see if they can help you at all or understand what your needs are to see if they can help service you. So. If you want to post the ask uh, on this thread, go for it, uh, and you might have some feedback. Um, but yes, there are okay, um, there are people that can help um, help you build your applications. If you are currently a Google Now Workspace customer, reach out to our team, and we can maybe help um, pair you with someone. All right. Okay. So there's a couple more questions, but I want to make sure I can show a quick demo of how to access this new capability within. Um, within Google Sheets. So um, what I'm gonna do, just make sure you all can see this. Okay, so there should be, and it looks like it's visible, a sheet uh, that has a list of dummy data that I pulled. Uh, nobody thought a black rhinoceros would have an email address, but they do now. Um, this was going to be a pet list <laughs> of sorts, so we're gonna get a little creative here. So as Chris mentioned, it's really straightforward. As long as your data is structured appropriately or in a way that's compatible with AppSheet, you go to the tool section, click open in AppSheet, and it will launch a new tab. I'm already logged into my AppSheet account, I should say. Yeah, and I will but mention that if you don't have an AppSheet account at all, then you'll be prompted to um, uh, just sign up really quickly um, before you're able to open up your app there. Yeah, and it will link to your um, Google account if you authorize it to use that, which we would assume you would be doing since you're going through Sheets. It's not, and this is an important thing to call out, it's not moving your data to AppSheet. You can think of AppSheet as something that lays on top of your data source and communicates with it. It's, it does not collect your data and pull it into that particular platform. Um, it's cloud-based, so the two remain separate. Um, all right, and you, as you can see, I now have an application that I can make mod modifications to. Um, so I'm now in my AppSheet account. I'm directly in the editor for this particular application. I bypassed the My Account page. I didn't have to select an app. It took me directly to this editor. So now if I want to update um, the view, there's a calendar in here. If I want to change it to like a gallery or a deck view or one of our, I think we're up to 11 different view types, I can certainly do that here. Um, I can change the behavior if I want based on the data that I have. I can add a new action. If I wanna trigger a workflow of some sort, um, I can make changes to the data uh, here as well. And now Chris, since we originated this from Sheets and we started an application through that Sheets tab and went here, if we add a new column, to our sheet, like we have previously, uh, in previous um, office hours when we wanted to test things, would we just regenerate the data and it would update in the application itself? Yeah, it's the same, that's, that, that's all the same. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so those of you who've used sheets to build applications before, which are probably quite a few of you, just know a lot of the behavior um, is still very similar to what you were experiencing previously. It's just a shorter way to access um, AppSheet now. All right, Chris, anything else I should highlight in terms of this uh, functionality? No, I mean, that's really it. It's just easier um, to get to an AppSheet app from, from Sheets now. And 
if anything, it just represents that, hey, we're working with this team to make this easier and to really help you improve your productivity and you know bring the two platforms together to make collaboration easier. So um, this is just the start and it's it's really exciting. So you can look for more in the future. Yeah, it is really cool. Our, our little startup is all grown up now. <laughs> um, okay. Question about, okay, so there's another question about partners. Are there partners in South Africa? Um, so we have global partners. Again, if you're a Google um, now workspace customer, reach out to your rep and they can help pair you with someone. If you're just interested in an open ask um, to the creator community, um, feel free to, to post the ask. Um, on the thread for this particular office hours and, and um, somebody might reach out to you to see if they can help you. So um, highly recommend going that route. Uh, okay, so another question. Uh, what if I use the Google spreadsheet menu to create an app sheet app and later another user or maybe myself, I use that menu button again, what would happen? Will a new app be created or will I be redirected to the existing one? Good question. Um, I don't know the exact answer, so we'll have to follow up with that. So actually, you know what? I think it'll be similar to the way the um, add-on works before. Um, but I, I would have to double check. I believe I'm going to do just a quick. So it will take you, um, your one sheet with all of the data included in it will take you to the same app. So Nicholas, I believe your question is, um, if you're trying, can you create multiple applications with the same data sheet? based on the test I just ran, um, because I kept using the same data sheet to try to create a new app, it kept taking me to the same application. Sorry, yeah, if you're the same user, it will gen, but if you're if a different user tries to create something from that same sheet and doesn't have access to the app, I'm not sure what would happen. So we, we'd have to double check. Yeah, Nicholas, let's get back to you with a more clear answer, but for you yourself, um, which is one of the scenarios you posed, um, it sounds like it, it will be just the same application. Um, okay. Awesome. You are welcome. All right. A couple of ask for partners. Is the add-on or is the add-in only available in G Suite or also in a private environment? So I'm going to assume that you're asking um, if the add-in through the tools menu in Sheets to access an, an app sheet application um, if that's available in G Suite or a private environment. Um, so it's only available in Google Sheets right now? Or within the Google yep. universe, I should say. Um, it is not available in a private environment. All right, and let us know if we're, if we're not addressing your question correctly. Um, okay. All right, I'm just gonna take a, another quick pass to see if there's any other questions that we can address for right now. Okay, there's a question on PDF reports. Um, Karin, I, I believe, and I apologize if I'm uh, mispronouncing your name, we'll follow up with you um, on that particular question. If you would be so kind as to post that in the creator community as well, um, I'll be able to get extra eyes on that to, to help address your question. Okay. Yeah. Lots of good questions, everyone. Okay. Okay. All right, so I think we have addressed a bulk of the questions that we can for right now. Um, there's a couple we need to follow up on, but I think we've gotten most of them. So with that, a couple of next steps for everyone. So those of you that are um, in the Google universe that use Sheets, go ahead and give this new um, new way to start an app, uh, give it a try and let us know how it's working for you. 
um, feedback is important and really, really helpful as we move forward. Um, also, just a reminder that AppSheet automation piece, go ahead and sign up for the early access program if you're interested. Again, highly, highly recommend um, getting started uh, if you've never done something like this before. And from a testing perspective, um, give it a try. It's a really, really cool thing to be a part of. Um, and then I, I think, Chris, is there anything else that we need to... Oh, uh, the UI, UI refresh, excuse me. Um, for those of you that have been testing the UI refresh that we've been rolling out over the past few weeks, um, continue to provide feedback, continue to let us know what you think of it. Um, there's been some really great commentary on that again, but you know, keep that feedback coming. Um, but Chris, is there anything else you'd like to add or say before we, we close out? Nope, just um, again, if you're interested in looking at the templates um, of the, the workspace post app sheet templates, we'll send over the link for that. Yep. Um, yes, that's a really important one to highlight, and that's a great place to get started with as well. Um, so we have a number of resources that we'll follow up with you all on the creator community for this particular thread. Make sure that you um, follow along in the creator community for more resources in the future. Um, highly encourage you all to continue to chat with each other and continue to build applications and, and let us know what improvements you'd like to make or see made. Um, one last question I'll kind of pose for the group and feel free to provide your feedback on this however you, you see fit. It can be on the creator forum um, or it can be a question directly through this or, or emailed to us. Uh, we're considering holding a special office hour session where we talk just about working with Google Sheets and working with AppSheet and really getting into um, maybe some of the data structuring components or something like that. So if you're interested in that, let us know. We're starting to plan for that soon, but uh, we think it would be helpful, but we wanna make sure it's really beneficial and helpful for all of you as well. So um, let us know if that's something you're interested in. And aside from that, everyone stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you for joining us this morning. Chris, thank you so much um, for joining us this morning as well. It's always great to hear from you, even though I don't get to see you in person anymore. <laughs> um, and everyone, we will see you in a few weeks. Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone.